Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2011 Ford Fiesta with a 1.6 liter. The customer complaint is that the check engine light remains on with the car running. And the customer also stated that when she is at a stoplight, the engine tends to accelerate by itself. When she looks at the RPM gauge, it tends to go up and down without even her stepping on the gas pedal. So. That's why this car is here. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get inside the car, confirm the customer's complaint. I will show you the check engine light. Hopefully, it can act up while I have it here in the shop. And then we're gonna connect a scan tool to find out what kind of trouble codes we have in memory. So once we retrieve the codes, and then we will see what kind of directions we're gonna go with this. So let's go inside of let's go inside the car and scan it for some trouble codes. So I am inside the car right now, so I'm going to start it so we can confirm the customer's complaint. So as you guys can see, the check engine light remained on. The car is running. I hope you guys, can, I hope the camera is actually picking up that uh, RPM gauge. I'm not giving it gas. I'm not stepping on the gas pedal. I wish I could have... Uh, shown you the pedals down there i'm not stepping on the gas pedal but the vehicle is accelerating by itself and the abs light just came on it's actually accelerating by itself i am here just looking at the uh dash and the rpm gauge is like out of control okay so customer complaint confirmed so now Let's connect the scan tool to see what kind of trouble codes we have in memory. Alright, so I got the scan tool connected to the car. So now let's scan it for trouble codes. Okay, so the scanner just identified the car. It is a 2011 Ford Fiesta. Okay. Now, uh, we can either just go to the engine control module or do a whole system scan on it. I'm going to do a whole system scan so we can find out what's going on on all the modules. So, continue. So, let's give it a couple minutes. Oh, wow. We have a bunch of trouble codes here. So, eight codes on the engine control module. So the first code P0055 O2 sensor hero resistance bank 1 sensor 2. Well, this is not the one causing the vehicle to accelerate by itself. And then there's a vehicle speed signal pending throttle slash pedal position sensor uh, slash switch E circuit low, not current DTC. So I'm, I'm reading this one. And then the other one is throttle slash pedal position sensor slash switch D circuit high, not current D DTC. Lost communication with v vehicle immobilizer control module. Intake air system leak bank one. And then the other, the other code is air, air leak between throttle body and intake valve. And then the other one is air leak between mass airflow. So mass airflow sensor and throttle body. And then we got some codes on the ABS control module, some wheel speed sensor codes right there. And so it looks like this car needs a lot of love. So with all these codes we have here in memory, uh, knowing that we have O2 sensor codes and leak, I mean lean codes, you know, because if there's an air leak between the mass airflow sensor and the throttle, we might be having unmetered air entering inside the engine after the mass airflow sensor, which would actually uh, cause these codes to come up or maybe the throttle itself is also going bad so we don't know so the the next step 
I want to make is let's back out of here. I want to look at live data because looking at these codes, we have uh, we have that code that says leak between mass airflow sensor and throttle body. We might have a vacuum leak. So what I'm going to do right now, I want to look at live data and look at my fuel trim numbers and see what kind of numbers we have. So I'm going to go to engine control module and display data. So engine management data. Well, let me just look at fuel trim and O2 sensor data. So that's what I'm interested in. So let's customize this list. Deselect all. O2 sensor data feeds. And then that's all. I also want to look at engine speed. Yeah, engine speed. Okay. So let's look at these data pits here. And let's focus on the short term and long term fuel trim numbers. So if we have a vacuum leak, these numbers would be worse at idle and they will tend to get better at higher RPM at higher engine speed. So I'm gonna start the car. So the car is running, we're still in open loop. As you can see our short term numbers here haven't started counting yet. And the RPM is going up by itself so we are in closed loop right now so nothing too crazy here so I'm focused right here guys I'm looking at these numbers right here so we have negative numbers looks like we are running reach right now and the computer is correcting the fuel delivery so the computer is subtracting the fuel that's been sent to the cylinders now let me give it gas So we are at 3000 RPM and the fuel trim numbers actually don't look too bad. The fuel trim numbers don't look too bad. So I have my foot off the accelerator pedal right now. And this car is just, it sounds weird. The idle is high and now the engine RPM is increasing by itself. So, I don't think we have a vacuum issue here. I want to check the throttle position sensor. Okay, so let's back out of here. Okay, I'm going to turn off the car first. So, uh, the car is off. Now the next step we're gonna do is let's go under the hood and do some checks at the, because with this fuel trim, I mean with this uh, short term numbers that we have here, I don't think the issue is a vacuum leak. Uh, what I wanna do now is I wanna test that fuel, I mean that throttle body. I wanna test the sensor and the APP, the accelerator pedal position uh, sensor, the APPS. Because if we have a sensor that's going bad or that's kind of not telling the computer the right position of the throttle, 
that could do that or maybe the throttle itself is going bad you know the motor inside the throttle could be going bad too so let's go under the hood and do some checks all right guys so i'm under the hood right now and this is the throttle body and this here is the air filter box so i'm gonna the next step i'm gonna do will be based on the trouble codes we have and also we have to keep in mind that the customer said that the vehicle had been accelerating by itself and we were able to confirm that here too so Rem also remember that we had a code that was saying there is a leak between the mass airflow sensor and the throttle body. I, I'm doing a visual inspection right now. I don't see any cracked or broken hose. So everything looks good. The inlet tube between the air filter housing and the throttle looks good. So I don't think we have a vacuum leak issue here. And the fuel trim numbers looked good. So what I'm about to do next is I want to test the throttle itself. The throttle body has got a motor and then two TPS sensors on it. The th TPS stands for throttle body position sensor. There are two sensors on this motor. I'm actually going to remove this uh, inlet tube here so you guys can see what I'm about to do but let's look at the wiring diagram first so we can know which wire is what and what wire we're gonna test so this is gonna be a quick one we can either I mean we're gonna start by checking the throttle first if the issue is not the throttle I believe it might be the APP which I doubt the APP stands for accelerator uh, pedal position so accelerator uh, pedal position sensor APPS there are actually two sensors uh, there on the accelerator pedal so let's do that first I'm suspecting a faulty throttle position motor because when that motor starts to go bad it actually doesn't hold the plate still so if it's moving the plate a little bit and I mean air I mean unmetered air is going or the 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 plate is not staying uh, still if it's moving that will actually increase the engine speed which will uh, definitely explain what the customer is experiencing so let's br I'm gonna bring up the uh, wiring diagram here let's look at the wires and do some checks alright guys so here is our uh, throttle body wiring diagram this is the throttle body motor here and these are the throttle, the throttle position sensors, there are two of them, I mean potentiometers, one wire here is going to have the ground and then the other wire is going to be the 5 volt reference and then these wires here will be the uh, sensor signal. So I believe these two wires come from the computer, so this blue and white wire this will probably be a 5 volt ref or ground and then the yellow I think yellow and violet would be a either ground or 5 volt so actually we can follow it uh, so let's just follow the blue wire so it's 2 so wire number 2 on the next page so hold on so 2 is right here I'm sorry for the glare guys so if we follow this 2 hold on focus 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 right there so through it says electronic so yeah ETC return so this one the blue one is the the return is the ground okay electronic so electronic throttle control uh, return so the blue wire is the ground okay I'm sorry for the glare guys so now that we know that the blue wire is the ground so the next step is gonna be I mean this is really straightforward so let's go to the throttle body 
and do our checks. All right, so I just back probed the brown and yellow and the green and orange, which are the throttle position sensor signal. So now I'm gonna grab a multimeter so we can do some checks there. So since we have uh, two position sensors, I'm gonna use my multimeter and the lab scope so we can look at the readings on both sensors at the same time. All right guys, so I got the lab scope and the multimeter connected to our uh, TPS sensor signal wires. There are actually two sensors in this. I don't know if I said that already. So I'm gonna go inside the car, turn the key on and step on the gas pedal. So we're gonna actually watch the voltage on the multimeter and the lab scope. There are two sensors. One is gonna have a high voltage with the key on and then the other one is gonna have low voltage with the key on. So they are supposed to go opposite from each other. One is supposed to go high going down and then the other one is supposed to go low going high. So the max voltage is five volt. I believe this one is gonna have five or four point something. So when I step on the gas pedal, the voltage on this screen is gonna go down. And then the voltage on the multimeter will increase. Okay, so what we wanna see here is a smooth increase on the voltage. We don't want a voltage jumping up and down from one to two or three to five. We want a nice smooth increase. And on this one, we want to see a nice smooth decrease, okay? And also, you have to look at the throttle plate and see how it's going. So as I step on the gas pedal, the plate should move or should open smoothly, okay? So let's do that. I'll have you guys uh, focus on the multimeter and the lab scope while I go inside the car and step on the gas pedal. The key is on. Uh oh, that's weird. Did you guys hear that noise? I just lightly touched the accelerator pedal. And right there. That's abnormal, guys. It sounds like the throttle motor is going bad. So I'm holding on the gas pedal right now. I don't know if the voltage is increasing smoothly or if it's jumping up and down because I can't see. So I'm increasing, I'm actually, uh, I'm continuing to press on the gas pedal. So I'm going towards the floor. I don't like that noise guys. That noise is abnormal. So I am actually on the floor right now. This is a wide open throttle. I don't like this. So I just pressed a little bit and I'm holding and the throttle plate is making noise. It looks like we are on the right path, okay? We're just gonna focus here around the throttle body. I'm pretty sure this is where our problem is. The, a good throttle body should open and close smoothly without any noise. I was just lightly, I mean, holding on the gas pedal and you guys could hear that clicking noise that was coming from the throttle. So we either have a bad throttle motor or maybe a ground issue, I don't think that's the case, but we're still gonna test them. So the next step I wanna do right now, I wanna make sure that we're having good ground going to our uh, TPS sensors, and also uh, the computer is commanding this uh, throttle motor on. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move these back probes down I mean, at this point with that noise, I should just call it, you know, but 
again, it's always good to double check everything and make sure that this is the right call we're making. I'm sure it is, but it doesn't hurt to go another step to double check everything. I'm gonna check the other wires and also I will go inside the car and do some tests at the APPS, which stands for Accelerator Pedal Position Sensor. There are two sensors in there that are right above the accelerator pedal. It's pretty much the same thing. Potentiometers, two of them. So this should be a 5 volt reference going to it, a ground, and then a signal wire. So I'll make sure we have that 5 volt present, the ground. I mean, I don't think that's the issue because if we, if we had an issue there, this throttle wouldn't have opened or this throttle wouldn't have moved because it's getting the signal from there and then the computer gets it and then uh, sends it sends the, the signal to this throttle to open, okay? So, but I will still check it. I'm not gonna include that in the video because just for the sake of the length of the video, I'm not gonna include it there. I will do all the other checks and then bring you guys back up. It's basically everything I'm doing, but I'm just gonna move, you know, down the wire. So I'm just gonna back probe the other wire to check the ground, the signal, and so on. Okay, same, same, same uh, procedures. So I'm gonna do that and bring you guys back up. So I tested the throttle. I made sure we have all our grounds and our power supplies and everything. I tested the other wires. Like I said, I'm not gonna include it in the video. I tested everything, just take my word for it, guys. Everything tests fine. I also did test the uh, APPS inside the car on the gas pedal and all the sensors checked out okay. So our problem is a faulty throttle, uh, throttle body, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this throttle. I already called the dealer. Um, they actually have the throttle in stock. So uh, someone from Ford is gonna deliver it here. I'm gonna remove this throttle so we can replace it. Here is the new part, brand new from Ford. So I'm gonna remove the old one. Here's the old throttle. Let's just put it right here. You wanna inspect that seal right there, that gasket, and make sure that the gasket looks good. So the gasket looks fine. So now I'm gonna install. I'm gonna install the new throttle body. So this is a plastic intake. I'm not gonna use the electric ratchet first. I always like to do it manually so I can feel the uh, so I can feel the bolt 
going through because you just don't want to start shooting that bolt if you cross thread it you screwed Just want to get them nice and snug there. All right. So now let's do the same test. Let's do the same test with the new throttle body and see what happens. And I'm back probing the uh, signal wires. So I'm gonna go inside the car, turn the key on and then actuate the gas pedal. So let's see if this one is gonna make noise and also stay focused on the voltages we're gonna read on the scope and on the multimeter. So this one is gonna be a high voltage that will decrease again. It has to be a smooth decrease and on this one, it's going to be a low voltage increasing up to uh, 4.5 volts. And it has to be a smooth increase as well. So I'm going to do that and just watch that, guys. So key is on. So I'm slightly stepping now. And as you guys can see, this throttle is not clicking at all. So I am stepping gradually here towards the floor. And I am at full floor right now. So can you guys tell the difference? No more clicking. Uh, let's try this one more time. So I'm slightly touching on the gas pedal like I was doing earlier with that bed throttle. I'm holding right now. And as you can see, this new throttle is quiet. So I'm stepping towards the floor. So So wide open throttle. That's it guys. Uh, the issue was the throttle body. Okay. And the other test that I did wasn't really necessary, especially testing the, uh, the APP in the car and the other wires, but it's always good to you know, again, I will, I can't stress this enough. It's always good to check and double check yourself before you start replacing these components, especially an expensive component like this one. So I'm going to put everything back together and then we're going to go inside the car, start it and see if it's going to continue to act up. But this is a fix already, but let's put everything back together and then go inside the car. I got everything back together and now let's go inside the car and do our last checks and finish with this. We are back inside the car. Uh, I got the key on right now. So let's scan it.
So here are our trouble codes. You know, we had all these uh, throttle actuator codes, you know, throttle pedal position sensor. So it had a bunch of codes, and all these codes were caused by that faulty throttle body. Like this one, for example, not this O2 sensor code. This actually, we're gonna ignore this code on this video because actually in this video, I'm just focusing on this throttle uh, actuator codes, this one and the other ones, not even the vehicle speed signal pending here. This, so let's ignore these two, but the repair we just did will take care of the other codes okay and so we are now focused on this I will, I will do this I will get I'll take care of the uh, O2 sensor once I'm done with the uh, throttle body issue I don't know if I'm gonna film it but we shall see um, so we have a bunch of codes and even this air leak between throttle body and intake valve these codes are caused by that faulty throttle body too because remember the throttle plate is kind of like this so when you are idle it's it's almost closed it's just slightly open and as you step on the uh, gas pedal the throttle plate increases and as you guys could see when I was just slightly touching on the accelerator pedal the, the, the uh, other throttle was actually moving by itself and i mean it was noisy it was clicking and it was sh i mean it was shaking it was moving by itself so that variation would allow air to enter the intake so it would allow more air to enter the intake which would increase the engine speed because the computer is going to see that erratic uh input from the tps and then the computer is going to actually increase the injector pulse and and the engine speed increases so anyways with that being said we're gonna back out of here and clear these trouble codes actually let me see actually before I clear everything let me let me double check which O2 sensor are we dealing with okay, O2 sensor bank 1 sensor 2 okay so it's sensor 2 so let's clear the codes. So all the codes are cleared. Let's just double check one more time. See if they're all gone. So no codes present. This is good. So let's back out of here and start the car. All right, guys, it looks like we fixed it. The check engine light is off now. And as you guys can see, our RPM gauge is no longer bouncing. You know, the engine sounds smooth. It sounds nice and smooth right now. It's no longer accelerating by itself, like uh, the customer said. <laughs> she said, Dio, the car is actually accelerating by itself. It's like it's giving itself more gas okay so this is a fix guys um, the next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna check that O2 sensor and then replace it I don't think I'll film it so thanks for watching guys thanks for being here uh, if this is your first time subscribe to my youtube channel K Diagnostics if you have any comments questions criticism leave them in a the comment box and while you are there don't forget to ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time.